Well, hello there, and welcome to Friday, March 5th, 2021, and welcome to Cord Cutting Weekly, where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news, and it has been an absolutely jam-packed week of news this week. We've got price hikes, closures, and rumors to talk about. Oh, and a whole streaming service just launched this week as well. But first, really quickly here, if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. You'd be doing us a huge favor here at Core Cutters News, and you'd also be joining an awesome and growing community. And now with all that being said, let's dive right into the news, starting with the launch of Paramount+. Plus. Well, yes, this week indeed saw the launch of a new streaming service, or perhaps relaunch is a better description. In any case, on March 4th, Paramount Plus officially launched, replacing CBS All Access as a major component of Viacom CBS's overall streaming strategy. To sum up, the new streaming service launched with a $9.99 ad-free monthly plan, while the existing $5.99 ad-supported plan continues on for the time being. And then sometime in June, we're told, a new $4.99 ad-supported plan will be offered which does not include access to your live local CBS channel. Meanwhile, Jess has a post up about what to expect with the Paramount Plus launch, and earlier this week we published a video deep dive on the new service as well. You can find those links down in the video description if you want to learn more. Meanwhile, we're hearing rumors that the NFL and Amazon could be nearing a deal that would give Prime Video exclusive streaming rights to several NFL games. The report comes from the Wall Street Journal, which adds that we could see an official announcement as soon as next week. Now, the rumor deal wouldn't begin until after the upcoming 2021-2022 season and could include a large number of Thursday night games. Meanwhile, Fox, CBS, NBC, and ESPN would keep their Sunday and Monday night deals in place. Of course, at this point, these are all just rumors, but we'll definitely be on the lookout for an official announcement in the near future, and we'll definitely let you know as soon as we learn more. In HBO Max news, Warner Media CEO Jason Kyler reiterated the company's plans to introduce a cheaper, ad-supported pricing tier in the future. Speaking at a tech conference this week, Kyler did not disclose pricing or launch details for the new plan, but did say fans will be excited once they see it. Kyler was quoted as saying, it turns out most people on this planet are not wealthy. If we can wake up and use price and be able to kind of invent and do things elegantly through advertising to reduce the price of the service, I think that's a fantastic thing for fans. We'll of course have more on this ad-supported option as more details emerge during the year. Stay tuned. This week also saw Fubo TV release its fourth quarter earnings, and the company shared that it ended 2020 with a little under 550,000 subscribers, or 547,880 to be more precise. And that total includes about 92,000 new subscribers who signed on during the fourth quarter itself. Fubo TV had shared preliminary numbers earlier this year that suggested the company would reach about 545,000 by the time the official numbers were released. In all, the company says it had its strongest fourth quarter and strongest overall year ever, with about $105.1 million in revenue, above the 94 to 98 million that had been projected. And it'll be interesting to see where the company goes from here. We've seen Fubo TV make some moves into the sports wagering business to go along with its traditionally sports-focused streaming options, and we're definitely curious to see where that can lead. Stay tuned. In Peacock news, there's renewed hopes that the streaming service could soon be headed to Fire TV. Now, Peacock is currently available on a number of popular streaming platforms, including Apple TV, Chromecast, Android, iOS, Roku, and more. But one notable exception, of course, has been Amazon's Fire TV line. Well, this week, Comcast CEO Brian Roberts hinted at the possibility during a conference hosted by Morgan Stanley. Roberts was quoted as saying, We're not on every platform yet with Peacock. We're on most. We hope and believe we'll get to all the major platforms soon. And while that doesn't call out Fire TV specifically, it's not hard to imagine which platforms Robert was alluding to. In any case, we'll keep a close, close eye on any potential announcements and let you know as soon as we learn more. This week, we also learned that the PlayStation brand will stop offering movie and TV show rentals and purchases through its online PlayStation store. The company issued a blog post this week announcing the change where it cited a shift in consumer behavior. In other words, folks are relying on streaming services more than they are direct transactions through the PlayStation store itself. In any case, the change is set to occur on August 31st, 2021. Those that have purchased shows or movies before the change will still have access to that content via their PlayStation consoles or on supported mobile devices. And of course, you'll still be able to watch a wide selection of shows and movies via the growing number of streaming and rental options currently available on PlayStation 4 and newer PlayStation 5 consoles. 
In AT&T news, we learned this week that the company is raising prices on legacy AT&T TV Now and Direct TV Now plans. Generally speaking, the majority of customers on those older plans will see around a $10 price hike, which puts these grandfathered options on par with the newer AT&T TV plans. Of course, the company has been working to shake up and streamline its video business. Last week, we reported that the company had reached a deal with TPG to create what it's calling New Direct TV, and it's possible these new price hikes are an attempt to encourage customers to move on from those older legacy plans and onto the company's newer options. In any case, if you're on one of those older plans, keep an eye out for a notification email. In Roku news, the company announced a partnership with Nielsen that could strengthen the company's advertising business. The companies will work together to integrate Nielsen's ad and content tech into Roku's platforms, which could give traditional advertisers more data on how their ads are doing on streaming platforms. And while that may not be quite as consumer-focusing as new channels on the Roku channel, we'll continue to track Roku's ad business as it grows and evolves over time. Should be interesting. In Pluto TV news this week, we reported on a user survey that could offer insights into future plans for the free streaming platform. You can check out details in our post link down below in the video description, but some of the survey questions ask about changes and improvements to the existing guide, the option to tag favorites, watch list creation, and more. Of course, there's usually a big gap between ideas on a survey and actually adding new features, but we'll definitely be watching Pluto TV closely to see what the free streaming service has in store for the future. And lastly, this week we learned that Orpi TV has officially shut down and gone out of business. We'd seen speculation about the closure circulating over the past couple of weeks, but this week saw an official statement from the company. A message on the company site now directs users and visitors to a special offer through Dish that includes a monthly programming package. And of course, you can check out our post linked down below in the video description for more information. And so there you go. Those were the top headlines from an extremely busy week here at Cord Cutting Weekly. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in. And yes, if this is your first time checking us out, or if you otherwise haven't done so already, please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. That helps us out a ton, and it signals to YouTube that our content might be worth recommending to folks more often. And again, you'd also be joining a great community. On Wednesdays, Jess hosts a live Q&A session with our viewers and subscribers. And then on Thursdays, we dive deep into specific topics like this week's video on the launch of Paramount+. Plus. Paramount Plus is the new name for Viacom CBS's streaming service, and it represents a rebranding, revamping, and relaunch of the company's CBS All Access streaming service. And then there's Cord Cutting Weekly every Friday, where, yes, we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. For now, though, thanks again for tuning in this week. My name is Philip Palermo. Have a safe and wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time. Take care.